In this video, I'm going to show you how to test how fast your Clipper Control 3D printer can actually go. One of the major advantages with using Clipper firmware with something like the Sonic Pad is the ability to massively reduce the amount of time it takes to print anything. If you've been following along with my Sonic Pad Basic and Intermediate series, then you will have already completed a lot of the tuning and calibration to ensure that your print quality doesn't suffer when you do ramp up the speeds. This video assumes that you've followed all of the previous steps of my Intermediate Sonic Pad series, and that you've done a PID tune, you've tuned rotational distances, and you've also used the included sensor to tune input shaping with your Sonic Pad. If you haven't done all of those things, then find the corresponding video in the description below and run through those before coming back. All done? Great. Right, what we're going to do is print a test model after inputting a few commands into our Sonic Pad and then look at the results of this print to determine what our maximum acceleration should be. The ringing tower model that we're going to use is linked in the description below. Download it and import it into your slicer. It should import in the correct orientation, which will look wrong. The Y will be along the X axis and the X will be along the Y axis. However, this is the correct orientation for this test print. When you slice this model, use a layer height of 0.2 or 0.25 and set infill and top layers to zero. With Cura, spiralize the outer contour, smooth the spiralized contour and use a one to two millimeter bottom thickness. Set a print and outer wall speed of 100 millimeters per second a minimum layer time of three seconds, and make sure that enable acceleration control is disabled. Slice this model, send it to the Sonic Pad, but don't start yet. Just like with pressure advanced tuning, we're gonna send a couple of commands using the console. If you haven't already, enable the console in the settings. Either on the Sonic Pad itself or in the web UI, enter the command shown here on the screen, which will also be down in the description for you to copy and paste. This command zeroes pressure advanced, so it doesn't affect our results. Then enter or copy and paste this command, which again will also be in the description. What this command does is tells Clipper to increase the acceleration by 500 millimeters per second. Every five millimeters, it goes up, starting with 1500 millimeters per second. You can now print the model. Just like with pressure advance, if the print quality starts deteriorating or your printer can't handle the speeds, then stop the print early. Inspect your finished print and then try to find the highest point at which the quality looks acceptable. The easiest place to see what we're looking for is in this area, where you should start to see the gap widening as the acceleration increases. Decide where the gap starts widening on your print and then work out what the acceleration was at this point. Remember the start and first five millimeters was 1500 and then it increased by 500 every five millimeters after that. Count the bands up in 500s and you should reach your maximum acceleration figure. For me, there was no noticeable widening of the gap in the initial print, which had a maximum acceleration of 7,500. I therefore repeated the test, but in the last command we enter before printing, I changed the 1500 to 7,500. When this print was complete, I then had a full range from 1500 all the way up to 13,000 millimeters per second. I found that one of the gaps started to open up almost immediately on the second print, so it looked like 7,500 was my maximum acceleration. Just to be sure, I ran another print with this command, which gave me a starting point of 6,000 millimeters per second. This confirmed that the gap does indeed open up at around 7,500, but I decided that 7,000 was a good figure that gave me a little bit of margin. This is a good increase over the 5,000 millimeters per second that Creality had set in their default profile for the N3 S1 Pro and should really help to reduce print times. If on your print you're seeing bulges on the corners instead of gaps in the walls, even on the higher accelerations, then it could be because pressure advance is disabled, especially if you're using a Bowden extruder. If this is the case for you, then repeat the test, but leave out the command that sets the pressure advance to zero. Once you have your maximum acceleration figure, you can edit the max Excel line in your printer config file. It's in the printer section. Hit save and restart and you're done. Now your maximum acceleration is limited to something that your 3D printer can handle, but you're also taking full advantage of the speed boost that the Sonic Pad can offer. Click here to go to the next video in the Sonic Pad series and leave me a comment down below to let me know what guide you'd like to see for the Sonic Pad. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.